extreme heat that's the nation's number one weather-related killer. Particularly here in Arizona, it impacts a large proportion of our population. So understanding how we can mitigate and manage that impact from extreme heat is really critical. Extreme heat is important to understand in part because I think in areas like Southern Arizona, we kind of take it for granted. It's just something that happens every year. But we know that extreme heat has disproportionately significant effects for vulnerable populations, which include people with pre-existing conditions, children under five, adults over, you know, their mid 60s or so. It means that some people might not realize how serious and significant it can be to your health in the moment in emergency situations, but also long term overall. Think about people who work outside for a living, who um, or don't work in buildings, work in the field, just in generally move around. People who don't have AC, you know, housing. And so that large portion of the population is really significantly impacted. And we all need to be, you know, members of a community that helps to understand where those risks are and how we can help people make it when they just don't, they don't have those same privileges. One of the goals of the Southwest Urban Corridor Integrated Field Laboratory or the Southwest IFL is to better understand our urban areas and kind of the impact of the built environment on both extreme heat and air quality. And to do that, we've uh, partnered across the three universities to do various types of field work. So some of that's involved having students go out and collect data on extreme heat or air quality that we didn't have before. As a part of the Heat Mappers team, I'm collecting traffic data using the Hestia Traffic app, which was developed by the Gurney Lab at NAU. Uh, we're classifying the type of cars that go by so that we can get counts on CO2 emissions for the area. Each stop, we collect data 10 minutes at a time for both directions of traffic. Sometimes we'll, we'll do paired counts together on a busier road so that we're limiting our bias by making sure that we're classifying vehicles the same. In the app, you can see that there are some marked locations and it goes from like Oro Valley all the way across to South Tucson. And we'll just drive to that location, find a nice shady spot. Sometimes we'll sit in the car. Sometimes we'll get out and pull up a chair to look out on the road and count. We've also had uh, Brookhaven National Lab brought in two climate trucks last summer that did traverses across a couple of our urban areas and collected data that we would never have been able to collect otherwise. One of the projects that the heat mappers students were working on this summer was using ASU's Marty cards. So building off some of Mark Keir's work in geography, looking at mobile homes and home thermal security, and looked at the outside of those homes and other neighborhoods in Tucson that are vulnerable to extreme heat. The Marty cards are self-developed devices that you can bring around neighborhoods, and they collect extreme heat and air quality data at a really fine local level. So measurements of heat that are proxies for how we feel temperatures. We're really focused on collecting data in parts of the city that one, overlap with other things that we're doing, other types of heat measurements, and two, really focus on different kinds of shade environments so that we could start to measure the impact of those shade environments on what people are feeling on any given day. The thermal conditions that people experience in their homes vary tremendously but we know very little about how they vary by housing type, by age, by occupation, by income, by race, all these different ways in which we um, understand social difference. We hadn't really thought through how those differences might affect people's ability to keep their homes cool. The primary activity that our heat mapper this summer was involved in was integrating all of that interview data that we collect, all the transcripts that we had collected, into what we call qualitative data analysis software, which would allow us to go through and find patterns in what people were saying that we can then relate back to the survey data we have about incomes and um, immigration status and whether or not people have had health impacts and, and to see what kind of connections we can draw and then look at the actual temperatures that people experience in their home and see if we can tell that complete story. 
One exciting thing that we've been able to partner with cities on is as they've been developing new plans to improve their climate and their heat planning abilities across Arizona. So we uh, run those through our plan evaluation with students and that improves the quality of the draft. And so we've seen a couple of cities actually change their draft plans before they're adopted based on the work that we're doing and the science that we're providing. Building on the success of programs like the Southwest IFL, the Arizona Institute for Resilience launched a heat resilience initiative that I'm the director of last year. And so the mission of the heat resilience initiative is to support future research uh, opportunities like this and to better connect our staff, our faculty and students and community members to address extreme heat for the state of Arizona. Thank you.